Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Both quarterbacks have reliable tight ends they know they'll be able to count on to make plays. It's the Rams going up against the Jaguars. With that, we head upstate to Jacksonville and a rainy Everbank Field, where we say hello to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry first opened in 1995. There's a look inside Everbank Field here in the river city of Jacksonville, Florida. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Los Angeles Rams. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. The L.A. Rams prep for their first offensive series, and Jared Goff for the year through four games, seven touchdowns, one pick. Charles, he's third in the NFL in passer rating. And once again, a lesson to all of us, about evaluating drafts way too early. Because remember, he's always going to be linked with Carson Wentz, who went number two to the Philadelphia Eagles and started all of 2016 and played well. Many people thought that Jared Goff wasn't ever going to hit that level. I know it's early, but let's let this play out a little bit. He's showing right now the potential and why people took him number one. Now a play fake here on first down. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. An early statement on the game's first play. 18 yards and a first down. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he'll take this up over the 40 to about the 41. A gain of three, second down for this Rams offense. Todd Gurley continues to be back, Charles, after his sophomore slump. He leads the NFC in rushing through four weeks. He didn't even reinvent himself in the offseason. He didn't even rededicate himself. He just went back, evaluated what happened the previous year. I think he's helped his vision out a little bit running it. But you know what's really helped out Todd Gurley? What's that? The addition of Andrew Whitworth at left tackle. Mm. Solidified the offensive line, veteran leadership and presence, and now Todd Gurley is confident if he runs in that direction, his blocks will be there. He has seven touchdowns, scored number seven in the win over Dallas last week. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. Last year, Gurley, 74% of L.A.'s carries. That's the highest percentage in the league. But no real payoff because they finished 31st in the league in rushing. I think as a team, they ran for 78 yards per game. They had a 1,000-yard receiver and Kenny Britt out wide, but they really didn't scare people downfield. And because of that, they stacked the line of scrimmage and stuffed the run game. Now Gurley, and he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Now Gurley staying down. Oh, let's hope he's all right. While the training stakes a peak, we'll take a break.
Fresh set of downs here. They'll try the air now with Golf. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. For this Jacksonville defense, Charles, as we see him there, all the moves, the draft picks the last few years, I think it's really starting to pay off defensively, isn't it? It certainly is through the first four weeks. Number one in the NFL against the pass. He has some exciting young players like Jalen Ramsey at corner. Miles Jacket, linebacker. You know, you bring in a veteran like Calais Campbell is rushing the passer with a bandit. And I know a lot of people would say, well, you play against Tom Savage, Marcus Mariota, Joe Flacco, sure. and Josh McCown. But Flacco won a Super Bowl. Mariota was the number one pick for, for his team. I think it's still a pretty good accomplishment that Jacksonville has going right now. And incomplete. There's a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. to go here for the offense on third down after the penalty. Third and 15. From the gun, here's gone. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. It's Johnny Hecker now, an all-pro three of the last four years on to punt. Back deep for the Jaguars, Marquise Lee. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. So Jacksonville lost last week at New York. Here comes Blake Bortles in the offense. And Bortles struggled in that game. The offense did as a total. But 140 in the yardage department, one touchdown and an interception. And you know they're trying to take a lot of the pressure off of Blake Bortles. The drafting of Leonard Fournette, the utilization of Chris Ivory, and when healthy, T.J. Yeldon to run the football. And, of course, he's also lost Allen Robinson, one of his key targets, got hurt earlier this season. So Allen Hearns, Marquise Lee, and Mercedes Lewis at tight end, they have to pick up the slack as well to try and help him out. Now the rookie first rider from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. And now a look at the offense for Jacksonville. The Jacksonville Jaguars offense in 2016 truly expected to pick up where they left off in 2015, where they were a big play offense by the end of the season, whether it was running the ball or throwing it. But they had some inconsistency in the offensive line and weren't able to reach those numbers. They're hoping for a repeat of 2015 with their 2017 squad. Again, it's Fournette. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. The defense here for the Rams. Make no mistake about it, the LA Rams are loaded with talent on defense, and they're led by their front four, especially defensive tackle Aaron Donald and defensive end Robert Quinn. They finished number nine overall in total defense in 2016, and now they have a new head coach and new defensive staff. They figure if they're not in the top five, they've had a disappointing year. 
The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Here's Bortles to throw. And he couldn't hang on. Almost an interception there defensively. Instead, it brings up fourth. And that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. Brad Norkman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Deep for the Rams, Tavon Austin. Call that 49 yards on the punt. They do get seven back on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. And the Rams getting set to go now. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. They go play action here on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work out a little bit more. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Gurley again here on first down. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he works free. And he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Now the offense lining up first and 10. Now it's gone. Looking sideline, and that's caught by Watkins. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always thought he could do a little bit more. 
and that was the reason why he can push it downfield. He has a good strong arm. Offense comes to the line now first and ten. They'll run it here with Brown. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second down. This is caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Tyler Higby, a nine yard touchdown grab. And the Rams are going to take a first quarter lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So this drive spans seven plays, and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Bortles now on first down. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Over the middle, complete. That's Cole. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Fournette, a first down carry. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. 
That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he can take his first step. And a long way to go for the offense here on second down. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. Portal's going to throw. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. And he's brought down. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. Got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So the offense has it first and 10. To throw his Bortles. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down now after the pass completion. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Throwing his Bortles on third down. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard at the 22-yard line. So here we go, first and 10 now. Bortles. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Chris Ivory that time, and that'll bring up second down. Second down following the incompletion. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. His throw incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Here we go. Three, nine, nine. Again, it's Bortles. And he's going to go down. Back at the 27-yard line, he's sacked. And it's Bortles, the quarterback, slow to get up. Looks like he's going to need a moment or two. Raiders take a look. We'll step aside.
So on fourth down, on comes the Jaguars. Jason Myers now for the field goal try. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. And this is just outside the right upright. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Yannick Ngakwe in there to bury him for a loss of 11. I think Jacksonville was hoping, but still it was a bit of a surprise to see Yannick Ngakwe last year. Second in the NFL among rookies in sacks. We just saw another one there. Yeah, he had eight. Of course, last year, a lot of the press going to Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, but Ngakwe continuing to put his thumbprint on this franchise. Goff gives to Gurley. Oh, and Nelson space doubling. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. Past the 20. And oh, so close as he takes it all the way to the two-yard line. A big run there by Gurley. 74 yards. So Gurley gashes the defense. And a lot of people say, do you take running backs early first round? Do you want them that high? Surely you're happy you took Todd Gurley that early. Without a doubt, Dr. Seuss. I love the way that that got done by you. But even better, it's fun to watch Todd Gurley run the football. He is electrifying. I want you to know that I did not mean to do that, by the way. First and goal here from the two. scrimmage back at the six a loss of a full three yards and now it's second down how about the defense not hanging their heads from the previous play where they were beat for a big run came back on the very next down and made a play defensively that was to their credit settled in here time expires on the first quarter of action seven nothing is our score more from jacksonville after this the nfl on ea sports is presented by snickers you're not you when you're hungry snickers satisfies back live now to begin the second quarter with charles davis brandon gordon it's the rams with a football to get us going and they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving one to Gurley and he's going to get him about three yards closer he's down to about the two his path became similar to almost running a stretch play didn't it trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back it just never materialized
Third and two. Golf. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Sammy Watkins, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams add on to their lead. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Zerline now for the PAT. And it's good to make it 14 0. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the result for the Rams a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Jaguars' offense now heads back onto the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game. And typically, those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. The first throw for Henney, the veteran backup. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for James O'Shaughnessy as tight end. And now it's second down. Charles, before the broadcast, you and I were talking about a couple of coaching veterans that have their teams right back in the mix again this year. Jim Caldwell with the Lions and Andy Reid with the Chiefs. And I think nationally there wasn't a lot of belief in Jim Caldwell as the head coach of the Lions, despite the fact that they made the playoffs last year. Remember, they lost their last three games of the regular season and snuck in and then got beaten in the playoffs. So people are like, ah, they'll revert back to form. No, they're off to a 3 and one start and playing awfully well on defense. Jim Caldwell deserves the lion's share of credit. See how I did that? Uh, yeah, I got you. I'm Good. with you. <laughs> Andy Reid, on the other hand, has a team that's played well for the last few seasons. The only thing they need to do now is have a deep run into the playoffs, but they've won every which way possible in the early going. Undefeated, they're built for the go, long haul. Go. I'm going to give you one last one. Sean Payton with the New Orleans Saints. 0-2 for the fourth straight year to start the season. They're now back at 2-2 two and, two and playing really, really well, especially on the defensive side of the ball. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. What I love about watching the passing game nowadays is that the one-dimensional receiver is really starting to leave the game. You've got to be able to do it all. Of course, you've got to run fast. Of course, you've got to catch the ball. But route running savvy and toughness is a premium for all of that now. Try the right side here with Fournette. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard. Right at the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways at the 47-yard line. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, 
Not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and three. Hitting. Underneath Ivory. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Here's a give to Fournette, and he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, here we go, here we hey, congratulations Black to the defense. Five. They won that one. Black Come back five. and get them the next time. Now Henny. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. First down, Jacksonville, the passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it, now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Ready, right 20, right 20. Now they run with a backup. It's Chris Ivory, and he will force his way forward for a yard or two, but I have a good feeling this will be coming back. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Now whistles here, and I believe one of the Jaguar linemen might have moved. All start offense. Still first down. fake he'll look to throw and his throw is going to be incomplete some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half no not at all and I understand why they look lethargic out of sync and it shows on the scoreboard Second down here after the incomplete pass. Ready, right, 20. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Jaguars on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and 14. Black 35. Black 35. They'll drop the throw. 
And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to 3. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run out of. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game, these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. Try and start the drive with Gurley. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Play fake to Gurley, now gone. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch, he was able to keep the feet in bounds. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that, and that really chips away at your confidence. The throw on second down is gone. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The Rams on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Caught by his rookie tight end, it's Gerald Everett. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. The Rams dead last in the NFL last year on third down conversions, just 32%, but they come through there. They've got a much better chance of that number rising this year for a variety of factors. Of course, they're going to get their quarterback, Jared Goff, going. But the big part is 
Last season, they were really a one-trick pony on offense. Now they'll be much more varied under new head coach Sean McVay. Back to the ground game here. Gurley. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll lead here to a third down. Count me as a little bit surprised by what we just saw there because this has been a pretty long drive, and normally you think that wears down a defense. In this case, it looked like the offensive line let him down a little bit. Yeah, allowed the penetration and the ability to stuff him for a loss. The Rams on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and eight. A shotgun snap for goal. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. Back now. <laughs> As I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 53. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. And now out come the Jags. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game 
are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And his throw's going to be incomplete. All right, need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Let's go now. They'll look to throw. And they finally get to him as he's taken down. Aaron Donald in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and 10 versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be a tough third and 18. Here's a carry for a former starter. This is TJ Yeldon. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Brad Nordman now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Goff on first down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Avery Jones. Continuing to fight downfield, the big tackle gets him for a loss of 11. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. It's Gurley, and he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. And now the Jags defense deciding to call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime.
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The Rams on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and forever. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back. And they're going to take a timeout defensively. So with fourth down coming up, they go ahead and burn it and say we'll see what happens. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup and get set as we resume action. Here's Johnny Hacker now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Take it at the 37. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. Took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we send you downstate to Orlando to check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Jaguars are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Rams have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's roll the highlights. Now to the middle of the first. Jared Goff getting it into the hands of Tyler Higby. And it ends up working for a touchdown. Rams now on top. Rams on offense, first quarter winding down. Gurley is able to get clear of everybody. He'll pick up more than 30 yards on the play. Rams now later on the drive. Watkins is wide open here on the catch. And this four play drive goes for a touchdown. As they move out in front, 14-0. Now first and 10, Jones is going to push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. So it's not to do it from here in Orlando for the second half kickoff. Let's get back upstate to Jacksonville and Brandon Dyden. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. 
and I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do real, I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now a play fake here on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Lewis. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. down and 10 now for the offensive group. Fournette on the counter. And an alley to run. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Well, there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. Fresh set of downs here. They go play action here on first down. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. It's cold, and some big-time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. They'll step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know. Defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. And the offense lining up first and ten. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumbled. It's loose. And now the Rams have got it going the other way. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Another tough one there from Blake Bortles' partner. 2015, yeah. led the league in fumbles 14, as a quarterback right? at 14 of them. But you just expect that to get better with experience in the league and, of course, better support from his offensive line. In this case, though, he kind of reverted back to that year. Out come the Rams. He'll have it first here to begin the third quarter. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. 
What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone fraction defense. About three, five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. It's a gain of three, and it sets him up with second and just two yards to go. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten. So now they can keep grinding out first downs, and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. On second down, here's Goff. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now, in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield? Maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. Goff on third down. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They got a completion there. But that's clearly an example of one side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very <laughs> Hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on the passing play. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Now a handoff for Gurley. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there. Second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. To give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. So the offense has it first and 10. Play action. It's gone. And that is incomplete. Robert Woods, the intended receiver that time. And it's second down. But it's not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get Bob with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. Now it's Brown. And the ball is knocked out. And did the Jaguars come up with it? They did. And maybe that would cost. 
caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. Start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Going to run the draw with Fournette. And he takes it across midfield to the 45. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. The offense on third down tonight, three for seven so far in this game. They're looking at third and a few inches. Play clock all the way to zero. Didn't get the snap off. Five-yard penalty. And you see the head coach writing that note on his play sheet right now. He's going to be addressing that with his staff. A sense of urgency. Get to the line of scrimmage. Snap the ball. The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. From midfield, here's Bortles. And that is incomplete. Here's Brad Nordman now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he gets it away. A directional kick going toward the sideline. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. field here comes Los Angeles and a fumble last time ball security talk about it all the time in the National Football League they've got to be better at it on this drive don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time I don't care if it's OTAs mini camps first and first day of camp in the regular season ball security comes up about what the second sentence of the yeah. coach's address and those are so many drills focus on that all the time and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations doesn't always work out, though. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. Good move by Gurley. And he's taken down, but able to get this up to the 20-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there when you see these nice, explosive, strong runs. And this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows his offensive line's gonna give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now a 
first down throw, gone. Working the middle here, that's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Back to the workhorse today, it's Gurley. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there, it'll be second and eight. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well. Because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. Here's Gore. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Now Goff. Underneath to Davis. They'll give him eight on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, <laughs> hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And while there is no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window, and they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. They'll run it again with Fournette. Pretty nice move, but not a ton of space there. They stop him shy of the 25. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing him further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Throwing his Bortles on third down. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Ten yards there. Good enough for the Jags first down. So here we go, first and ten now. Here we go. 
Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to, but when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to. Bortles to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Lewis. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Bortles on the give to Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. On second down, here's Bortles. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumble. It's loose, and the Rams have got it back. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drop. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. <laughs> Following the fumble recovery, golf. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. Jacksonville made plenty of changes in their coaching staff in the offseason, but they kept the defensive staff mainly intact 
They're going to need a better payoff. They only had seven interceptions as a group last year. Good to get the interception there. They want plenty more of those because, as you said, a lot of cash invested on that side of the ball. A lot of talent. They're ready to roll. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Bortles. And this is incomplete. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. From the gun, it's Bortles. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. Try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Shotgun now for Bortles. And that is incomplete here. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion, but still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do, and, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm thinking. I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Yeah, that's true. You've said that before. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. First down, it's Gurley. And some room to roam now. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. 
And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Now Gurley. <laughs> Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Turns and gives to Gurley. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll try the air now with Goff. Throw right side is into the hands of his tight end, Everett. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Golf on first down. Right side complete. That's Woods. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the clock because it's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. Goff now looking to throw. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. And was this game announced as a night game prior to and maybe his rhythm confused. is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. So second and ten here. They'll run it here with Brown. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown Rams. A great effort there. An 18-yard touchdown run. And the Rams add on to their lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Yeah. 
And this one gives his guys a 12-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays. And a nice play on the end of it. An 18-yard touchdown run. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. On first down, Bortles. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. and 10. Here's Bortles. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The running back Leonard Fournette, his intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Second down now after the incompletion. Now Bortles. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And it's third down. The Jaguars on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and ten. Throwing his Bortles. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. No, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. On the mental focus. Yeah, the that's true. Got to stay with it. That's true. Here's Brad Nortman now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. <laughs> Pretty move. Oh, and now he bowls him over. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Here's 
here's Gurley. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, it'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Here's gone. Wide open receiver complete. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. From the 50, it's golf. And that's caught left side, it's Woods. That goes for a gain of 31. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield, but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Fresh set of downs here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 10 more there and another first down. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into submission. Uh, hadn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. A great play there with now two fourth quarter touchdowns. And the Rams add on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. The bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Zerline out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. 
And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. And as the numbers show, he really wasn't in the mix at the beginning, but they've got him in the rotation now, and it's proved a good move. And that's what happens when you're a good player. There's a lot more attention drawn to you, and it's obvious that they had him in their game plan on defense, not letting him get off to a good start, but he's found a way so far here in the second half. They begin with a run by Fournette, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now Bortles, and complete to Lewis over the middle. That catch good for five, it's third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running, just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The Jaguars on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, four for 10. This time it's third and three. Here's Bortles to throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Nikel Roby Coleman. And he will bring it back. It's an interception return for a Rams touchdown. That's the story of the game. They've been suffocating all game long on defense. They were suffocating there again in a big way. And they've done it not just by out-athleting them, which is often the case, but by being able to adjust to anything they tried to throw at them and beating them into the punch each and every time. This was a defense that was well-prepared. Zerline now for the PAT. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown, this offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there, it's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. Mm -hmm. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. now on first down. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumbled. It's loose, and the Rams have got it back. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. 
but it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. Now these guys hardly got a chance to catch their breath after the quick turnover, but I doubt they're complaining much. Especially with the field position they get to start with. I wouldn't be complaining either. I'd want to get right back out there and get after them because now you have an opportunity to make a big play. I'd say I'd let's be aggressive and go after him. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be a second down. in the red zone. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team He's going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. To throw on second down is gone. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching, and he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. They are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. The previous play is under review. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. Just a four-play drive that time. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles.
Zerline out now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. They go play action here on first down. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. Michael Brockers in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Second down, over the middle complete. It's Lewis, and this one will go to the 28-yard line. Eight yards in the completion, but now they face third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. So completion on second down, that brings up third. Bortles gives to Yeldon on the draw. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Here we go now. Green, 90. Green, 90. Now Bortles got to have this one. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Rams get the football in outstanding field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, 
That rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Jacksonville.